praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing, and we're glad about it. Thank you for joining us today. Wherever you are in the world, I give God a shout-out every week for all of you who join us, wherever you join us in the world. I want, to, want you to grab your Bibles, and uh, we're going to be ministering today from a topic dear to my heart, which is the benefits of waiting on God, of how to patiently wait on God. Psalm 40 talks about patiently waiting on the Lord and the benefits of it. Grab your Bibles. I believe it is a word that will encourage you and help you through whatever you're going through this day. I believe it's a word for you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Father, we honor you, we worship you, we adore you, Lord. And we praise you for your loving kindness and your mercies. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for keeping us all week long. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done. We give you the praise and the glory and the thanks. We come this afternoon, God, praying that your perfect will would be done in the lives of your sons and daughters we pray and intercede for the person whose hand we hold we call their name out before your altar and ask you to step into the domain of their circumstance work a miracle in their life break strongholds give deliverance and healing and miracles and finances and whatever they need lord grant it in jesus name in the mighty name of the Lord. We pray not only for the persons whose hands we hold, but collectively we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who may not be with us physically in this building, but they've joined us through the internet, through television and radio and other technology. God, we pray that you transcend space and location and minister to them. We dedicate this time to you to get today. And I'm praying, Father, somebody will get saved today. Somebody would accept Jesus, get forgiveness today. Somebody would be redeemed today. I'm praying today, God, that somebody would be restored who's drifted away, rededicate. Praying for somebody who has doubts that they would get assurance. And somebody who's uncommitted and unconnected and not covered would get covered today. That you, Father, by the power of your might, would do a supernatural thing and plant them and fill them all in Jesus name now anoint us to be your mouthpiece God I'll say whatever you tell me to say and do whatever you tell me to do and let your name get the glory we give the glory to Jesus we give the praise to his name in Jesus name we pray amen amen and amen Grab your Bibles and open them to Psalm 40. Psalm 40. Say amen when you got it. And I want to read beginning at verse number one I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined he inclined to me and heard my cry and he brought me up out of a horrible pit out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps he put a new song in my mouth Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man who makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O oh Lord my God, are your wonderful works which you have done, and your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would de declare and speak of them, they are more then can be numbered. Amen. I want to talk about the benefits of patiently waiting. The benefits. You can be seated.
It's about 104. Hang with me for uh, 25 minutes or so. I want to talk about this Psalm of David. David writes a reflection. He's reflecting. This Psalm is a reflection of his journey. It is a, a rehashing of what he's gone through. He's gone through quite a bit, a lot of challenges, trial after trial, rejection after rejection, problem after problem. He's gone through so many things and he has concluded and drawn a conclusion of what he has done. And he, he says, I, I waited patiently for the Lord. I, I waited. And that's, that's a significant statement. He wants us to learn something and get this in our hearts and minds because it's needed. This, this scripture was written and recorded for, for us today because we live in the midst of an impatient society. Amen. People are unwilling to be patient. We want what we want and we want it now. This is a microwave, get it now, claim it now, get it quick culture that does not know that there are benefits to waiting on God. Many people get tired of waiting for God to change their situation. They begin to take, they, they make the mistake of beginning to take matters into their own hands. I want y'all to hear me for a few moments today. I'll be finished, I promise, when I get done. Yeah, I love the 12 o'clock because I don't get finished till I am done. Yeah, unlike uh, uh, the earlier services, I have to finish when the clock tells me time is up. So I'm a... Y'all hang with me. I'm going to preach until I get it all out of me. Because I need to talk to some people who are frustrated with life, who are frustrated with the circumstances that they're in, who are mad and angry and, and upset because God's not moving as quickly as they want God to move. They want God to hurry up and change things. A lady came to me after one of our services today. She says, I've been... I've been going through what I'm going through for two years. I said, wow, a whole two years <laughs> to myself. I said, uh, I think about Abraham who prayed to God for a son, got a word from God that he would be the father of a great nation and he waited 25 years to see it come to pass. We don't live in a culture today where people are willing to be patient and wait uh, on God to work in his time frame. God has a reason and when he doesn't move as quickly as you want him to move there's a reason why God doesn't move as rapidly as you want him to move. There's a, there's a reason, there's a purpose behind it and, 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 and David says in this 40th Psalm he says I waited. Matter of fact he says I not only waited but I waited patiently for the Lord. As a matter of fact when he uses this term, when he says, I waited patiently for the Lord, it, in, it is in fact one Hebrew word that takes two English words to explain it. This one Hebrew word, uh, it, it takes two English words, waiting patiently to describe it. And here's what it means. Patiently, I waited patiently means this. It means I, I am in a position of hope and expectation. I've got something that I'm looking and wanting God to do for me and I am in a posture of expectation and hope and I'm looking for God to work it out. And, and while I'm looking for him to work it out, I'm committed to staying bound and connected to God and to follow his ways rather than to do it my way. I knew I wouldn't get too many amens on that from, from this crowd right here because y'all, this is the microwave, got to have it right now crowd. This is, this is at 8 o'clock. They shouted just on that right here. They shouted right at this point right here because they are seasoned and older and they've experienced God and they've gone through the journey and they recognize that God is worth waiting for. 
But there is a generation that needs to be taught and reminded and instructed that that waiting on the Lord is a good thing and, and, and keeping that hope and keeping that expectation and looking for God to work it and staying bound and connected to him and in other words not backslide not sliding into your own way not taking matters into your own hands because that's what most people do when they're waiting and God doesn't move quick enough they take matters into their own hands and that makes your situation even worse than it already was Waiting patiently means that I'm, I'm, I'm going to have an attitude of hope and expectation. I'm determined to stay connected to the Lord. I'm not going to backslide. I'm not going to get tired of waiting. I'm not going to cuss God out. I'm not going to walk away. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to get weary. I'm not going to get frustrated. I'm just going to sit right here because I'm expecting God to move. I'm expecting God to do something. I'm not going to quit. I'm expecting him to work it out. And, and, and so my assignment today is to tell you why you should wait. That, this is my whole message today is to tell you whatever you're going through, why you should wait on the Lord and not get frustrated and quit. I need to tell you. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, he need to tell you. He need to tell you. He need to tell you. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you. Tell him I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you why. Here's why. It says right here. He says, I waited patiently for the Lord. Then it gives us that semicolon there. And then it says, here's number one. And he inclined to me and heard my cry. Amen. 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 Back at you. Thank you. I got one amen there. Yeah, that's my first point. He will incline and hear. Uh, did y'all see? Do you see that right? He, he inclined to me and heard my cry. He he, 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 he made a strategic move. And, and here's what it, the word incline means. Here's what incline means. It means he turned aside in your direction. Y'all, 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 y'all ain't got it. He, he, he heard your prayer. And he heard your cry. And he, he looked in your direction and he stretched and bent over. Let me put it in, this, in these words. He's leaning in your direction. Somebody say, he's leaning in my direction. I thought he had forgotten about me. I thought he had forsaken me. I thought he had walked on by. I thought he missed me. But the record here says, I waited on him. And because I waited and stuck with him and didn't quit and didn't cuss him out and didn't walk away. And because I stayed connected to him, he's leaning. He bent over. He turned in my direction and leaned in my direction. And that's enough to shout about right there. That out of all of the millions and zillions of people in the world, we serve a God who leans in your direction. Now that's, to me, that's just enough... I could end the, end the message right there to know that we serve a God and you all have to know this you got to know that we serve a God that when you put yourself in the posture of anticipation and expectation and you stay connected to him see I'm, I'm running ahead of myself let me let me back up because being bound to him being when you're patiently waiting on the Lord, here's what it means. It means that you're going to stick with God and do it his way and not do what your flesh wants to do. And, and, and the text says, I love this right here, he inclined to me. Ooh, I, ooh, 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 ooh. Y'all missed it. He, he said he inclined to me. Personally, he inclined to me and heard my cry. Oh my gosh, he heard. Somebody say he heard. He's listening. He perceived. He paid attention to. He gave attention to 
my cry. Now, I think this is important. I got to spend a moment talking about this because somebody might mistake what cry means. Cry doesn't mean he's responding to your emotions. That's not what the word cry means. And, and I need to talk about that because some of y'all are cry babies. Look at your neighbor. Stop being a cry baby. Tell them, grow up. Stop crying all the time. God, God, God doesn't respond because of your emotions. And what a lot of people do is they let their emotions call the shots. You let your emotions drive you to respond. Your, your emotions got you doing things and jumping out there and, and acting crazy and doing crazy stuff and running and getting in front of God. God might not move as quickly as you want to. He doesn't move until the time is right, until everything has lined up until everything is in order and do, don't you know that he's orchestrating everything right now so that when the right time comes he can bust a move in your favor that's what you that's what patient being patient mean it means patiently waiting means i'm recognizing that right now is not my time it's not time yet for my thing to happen and so I'm waiting on the Lord because right now he's moving things and shifting and orchestrating and he's moving this here and he's firing that person and moving that person and he's moving this in that direction and at my right time and season everything's going to line up and everything's going to be in order and when everything is always in the right place and right time he's going to move and make a move for me who am I preaching to today? Somebody high five your neighbor and say hallelujah. That's we I receive that. Stop crying, stop complaining, wipe the tears away. It's not your tears that made God move, it's that you made an appeal to Him. You cried, you prayed to Him, you had an expectation. It's your faith that moves God, it's your anticipation that He can work a miracle. I don't know who I'm talking to, it's your belief that He's going to work it out. not your complaining not your crying not your moping not your depression it's your appeal and your appeal is connected to your anticipation that causes him to lean I, I wish I had some people who who understood the magnitude of the God of the universe who made the heavens and earth leaning in my direction. I can't get no help up in here. I'm trying to find somebody who believes with me that he's a leaning God in our direction. So, so that's, 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 that's the first thing, is, is number one, he's, he will incline and hear your cry. Here's the second thing, verse 2 says, he also brought me up out of a horrible pit. Somebody say, a horrible pit. Out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and establish my steps. That's that just verse two enough. That's the, that's a message all by itself too. And, and I, I'm calling point two. He'll bring you up to set you up. Somebody here today is in is in a horrible pit. Somebody here is in miry clay. What does that mean? When you're in a horrible pit, it means you're in a dungeon. You're in a hole. You're in a prison. You, you've crash landed. You are in a place of destruction. You're in a horrible pit and you're in miry clay. That means you're in a sticky place. Here's what they both mean. You're in a place that you cannot get yourself out of. You're in a situation that's beyond your ability to do anything about. Matter of fact, if the truth be told, some of y'all have already been delivered from a horrible pit. Y'all might not want to admit it, but if the truth be told, we have been in situations so bad 
that we couldn't even testify about it. Anybody here ever been in a situation that you, you know God and only God brought you out of it? But you can't tell nobody it's so bad, it was so ugly, it was so nasty that you couldn't even tell anybody what he brought you out of. You ought to go ahead and give him praise and say, God, I thank you. I thank you for opening the door. I thank you for getting me out of that pit. I thank you for loosing me from this miry clay. I was slipping and sliding and this clay was all around me. I tried to get out, but I couldn't get out. Matter of fact, when he will bring you up and set you up, he brings you out of it and sets, here's what it says, and set my feet upon a rock. That means, that word set means, it is a word that means in a powerful way, he, or he, he rolls you up and set your feet. That word feet means your path or your walk. Oh, I feel a shout coming on me. That he got me up out of where I was and directed my path on a solid rock. That's a strong place and directed my steps that's what it says right here he established my steps i was in a place i couldn't get out of didn't know where to go or how to get out of it but he lifted me up and brought me out and set my feet and put me in the direction i needed to be in and i couldn't have done it by myself he did it for me somebody give god a shout he got me up out of this thing he set my feet on solid rock and he established my going bless the name of the lord i feel like giving him a shout right now i've got direction i got purpose i got an assignment i'm on solid ground Now, sometimes the 12 o'clock crowd gets on my nerves. Sometimes. Not all the time, sometimes. Sometimes y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. And you make me have to break it down for you. I got to remind you that you ain't been sober all your life. I got to remind you of the days you got so high that you don't even know how you got home. Go ahead, look straight ahead. Nobody will know I'm talking about you. I got to remind you that you done slept with so many people, you should have had gonorrhea, syphilis, HIV, you should have had everything. But you better give him praise that he set your feet. He brought you up out of there. You, you done been through so much. He set your feet on the side and established your going. God did that. God himself. Only God could have brought you up out of there. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Y'all excuse me, I feel like hollering for a moment when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah, thank you Jesus. ground now I got a clear path now I got clear direction now I almost lost my mind I would have gone crazy I would I should have had a nervous breakdown all that hole I was in that hell I was in that situation I was in that relationship you were in that marriage that job whatever your drama was ah! he brought 
brought you up out of it. He set you on a solid rock. Y'all making me have to holler up in here. I gotta, I gotta holler and I shout it. I gotta give him the praise. Hey! on a rock to stay hey hey he did it he did it he did it he did it forget it never shall forget what the Lord has done for me he brought me out deal you gotta learn how to wait you gotta learn how to wait I don't know who I'm preaching to but you up in here you might be on the internet too you got to learn how to stick with God. Don't quit your job. Don't quit your marriage. Don't quit your church. Don't quit the ministry. Don't quit. Hold tight. And in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. Hey! Hey! You gotta stick with God. Now, here's number three. I'm finished. Did y'all get number one? He, he, he gonna incline in here. Number two, he gonna bring you up, up out of whatever it is. That's why you wait, because if you wait on the Lord, he'll bring you out in his due time. Here's number three, he's in verse three. He has put a new song in my mouth. <laughs> Praise to our God. He has put a new song. He's going to take the blues out of you. He's going to take the drama song out of your tongue and give you a song of celebration and victory. He's going to help you sing the right kind of song. He, he, he got you through the pit. And he brought you through the horrible Mari clay. He's going to deliver you. And he's going to give you, he's going to bestow upon you. He's going to provide you with a new song to sing that's going to give praise to our God. Uh -huh. Hey, somebody say, hey. Somebody say, well, pastor, why do I have to wait? Why I got to wait so long? I'm glad you asked the question. Right here in verse 3 tells us, because many will see it. Oh. 
Y'all miss a great place to shout. Somebody say, see, see, y'all don't know that a lot of people are looking at you. And they see what you're going through. And they're waiting to see how you're going to respond. And what you're going to do. They're waiting to see what's going to happen. <laughs> they're thinking you're going to quit. They think you're going to lose your mind. The truth is you should have had a nervous breakdown. But you're still here. You should have lost your mind. But you're still here. I should have killed somebody. I should have gone postal. But I'm still here. Hey, hey, hey. They wanted to count you out. But when they see you singing and they see God working out, they're going to say, I better serve the same God you'll serve. Who am I preaching to today? Your boss is watching you. Your co-workers are watching you. The people under you are watching you. They're waiting to see what's going to happen. And when God works it out, he gets the glory and they will say, I better serve the God you're serving. I better go to the God and submit to the God that you are serving. Somebody give him the praise. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Be patient and wait on the Lord. Here's what verse 5 says. I'm finished. Many, many, O oh Lord, verse 5. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are your wondrous works which you have done. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, which he has done. I like this verse. And your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order if I would declare and speak of them they are more than can be numbered somebody better go ahead and give him praise cause what's coming in your direction what's coming down the pike into your house what's about to enter into the domain of your circumstance is the thoughts of God and it's more than you could ever number. Go ahead and give him the praise and give him the thanks. He's leaning in my direction. He's leaning in my direction. I have concluded. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on God because he already has a good track record in my past with working it out for me that I don't mind waiting for him to resolve what I'm going through right now. Somebody high five. If you know what I'm talking about, if you receive this word, somebody high five, shake a hand, say, I don't mind waiting. I'll wait on the Lord. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to walk away. 
I'm not going to cuss nobody out. I'm not going to give nobody a piece of my mind. I'm going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to wait on him. And when he works it out, hey, when he works it out, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. On the Lord, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind. Because I know you're going to come through. On you, Lord. On you, Lord. Come on, let's declare it. I don't mind. I don't mind. Said I don't mind. Waiting on you, Lord. You're a promise keeping God. I don't mind. I don't mind. I said I don't mind. Said I don't mind. I don't. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout of praise. That's good if it was for me, but this is to the God who is leaning in your direction. Give him a praise like you know he's worthy to be praised. sins that Jesus has made available to you your best bets to come on down here right now while you got the activities of your limbs come Waiting. Patiently waiting on you. I ain't worried 
about the time I worry about the time Lord I seem to find Lord I seem to find strength while I'm waiting strength while I'm waiting on you I am waiting I am waiting on you I am waiting on you hallelujah I'm waiting on you Lord Patiently waiting, patiently waiting on you. I ain't worried about the time, no. I ain't worried about the time. Lord, I seem to find. Lord, I seem to find strength while I'm waiting. Strength while I'm waiting on you. I ain't worried about the time. Seem to find Lord, I seem to find strength while strength while I'm waiting on you. Strength while I'm waiting. Strength while I'm waiting. Strength while strength while I'm waiting. Strength while I'm waiting. Strength while strength while I'm waiting. Strength while 